Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending April 26, 2019. I'm Sophie Antelgibert, and I'm joined today by our Chief Investment Strategist, Eric Ristabin. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Sophie. It's a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure to see you. So, I wanted to pick your brain this morning, uh-huh. Eric, on three topics in particular. First, um, we got a new release of U.S. GDP mm-hmm. growth numbers for the first quarter. Mm-hmm. Second, the second quarter, or yeah, I guess the recent quarter earnings season mm-hmm. is, uh, is moving along, so I wanted to get an update from you on that. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, oil. It's been a little bit unclear picture this week, so I Mm -hmm. wanted to get your take on that. Let's start with the um, U.S. GDP growth number that came out this morning and kind of blew expectations out of the water. Sounds like good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Big number blows out expectations and the market is basically flat. Yeah, so So, explain uh, that to me. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, it was a big number. 3.2% GDP growth in the first quarter. Estimates were 2.3. So it's a full percentage point, basically, higher than most experts had had uh, expected. Um, the, the primary reason the number was so strong, there were two things, inventory builds um, and exports. So inventories added about 0.65% um, in, in terms of the, the economic growth of that 3.2 number, um, and exports were about a little over 1%. Uh, both of those are highly volatile components of the index. There's a lot of swings in those. Mm. Um, so it's not surprising that the surprise came from those segments. Um, The problem is, and why the market is conflicted with the number, is that those were the strong parts of the the economy. Consumer spending was not great in the first quarter, nor was business spending great in the first quarter. Uh, So, you know, the the, what inventories give it, they take away. If if you get an inventory build and it's positive to the economic growth, oftentimes it's followed by a quarter where the inventory is drawn down and it's negative. Um, to the U.S. economy, or not just the U.S. economy, any economy. I I think it's the core pieces. I think it's the consumer spending and the business spending um, that's got the market's attention that maybe not everything is fantastic. Um, The business spending in particular is an area of watch for us because one of the things that we saw uh, in the end of the fourth quarter was CEO confidence fell off the uh, table in the fourth quarter. Um, they went dropped uh, from 55 to 45. I think there's 55 at the beginning of the third quarter, or fourth fourth quarter. Um, it dropped down all the way to 44. It's only actually gone up to 45. So wow. CEOs have not felt the rush of confidence that the equity market would seem to indicate. And and with business spending being a little soft in the first quarter, I think that's what's got people's attention. And that's why I don't think the market's been positively reacting in a big way to that that GDP number. Interesting. What about earnings? Are mm-hmm. we seeing a similar picture there? What's what's the update? We're sort of a third of the way through the announcements. What are you seeing? Yeah, it's similar in kind of good and bad, right? The, the really good part of earnings season is that the vast majority of companies are beating earnings estimates. So that number is running close to 80 percent. It's in the high 70s. Um, on the revenue, it's lower, which it almost always is, right? If they're going to surprise, they tend to surprise on earnings and not revenue. Um, the, the earnings uh, surprise or the revenue surprise is about 50% of stocks, a little over 53, I think it's 53% are, are beating estimates. So that's good. The problem is that the hen- headline blended earnings growth number is still negative. Oh, uh, it, okay. it's, it's better than the expectation coming into the quarter, but right now we're running at kind of a, a negative three plus percent growth rate for the first quarter year on year with first quarter of 2018. Um, and, and that was expected by the market. So yes, it's good that companies are beating estimates. Um, but the estimates are very low. But the estimates are really, really low, and the and the quarterly expectation is negative. It looks probably like this is a quarter that's going to be modestly negative in, when everything's done and dusted, because some of the sectors that are going to come in probably are going to beat in a bigger way. So we think at the end of the quarter it'll be close to zero, um, but may actually end up being negative as the market expected. Interesting. Switching gears a little bit to the oil market. Yeah. Um, so the U.S. government has changed its stance this week on a waiver program for yeah. oil in Iran. Can you what what is happening there, so, and what, how has that affected the price of oil? So basically, what these oil waivers were was that the the U.S. effectively was effectively allowing that's may not the right word, but allowing other companies to import Iranian oil through a waiver system. Um, they have now said they're no longer going to actually respect those that waiver system, which in 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 in, in technical terms probably means that there are countries out there that are no longer going to import Iranian oil. 
okay. which takes in the broader scheme probably it has the effect of taking supply out of the market. Um, okay. So that would, you would expect, be positive for oil. Right, um, yeah. Uh, because if there's less supply, that then should the put price upper helps. pressure. Yeah. 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 The, the, actually, out. oil is down about 1.8% so far this week. But, go figure, right? Yeah, go figure. <laughs> but, but again, context is key, right? It's also 43% higher than it was on, on Christmas Eve. So, you know. A depends on your starting and ending point. It depends on your starting and ending is how much you, you, how, how you feel about oil uh, in terms of its price momentum. Um, we think um, that there's strong support for oil at kind of $65 a barrel. And on balance, this, this Iranian waiver issue um, probably actually puts some upward pressure, a modest amount of upward pressure on that oil number. Um, because, yeah, the idea is if, Iran, if Iranian oil drops out of the world supply market, Saudis will kick in and kind of replace it, and they've said they will. Um, U.S. shale companies will probably come in and replace it. Uh, but the reality is... When the price is, is right. Yeah, yeah, when the yeah. price is right. But the reality is that doesn't happen instantaneously, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, there's probably an expectation Saudi will slow play the, the increase in oil production to offset the Iranian thing. So, I, again, So for a short saying, period of time, there might be a spike. You may see some upward pressure, and then, and then but 65 to 75 seems to be a, a range that oil probably is going to maintain for a while. Okay, excellent. Well, Eric, thank you very much for your insights. That's all we have time for today. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Hi, I'm Rob Cittadini from Russell Investments. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.